Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be taking a look at the 2014 UCS Sandcrawler. Set 75059 is just called Sandcrawler, part of the Ultimate Collection series. Uh, released in 2014 and has 3,296 pieces with 14 mini figures. Seven are unique to the set. Uh, originally, it retailed for $300, brand new in box. You're going to be paying around $462 versus used. It's going to be about $396, give or take. So here we are with this giant behemoth that is still not to scale minifigure-wise. It got the branding of UCS because it is a big vehicle and it also is a playset. I think it's actually the best of both worlds. Could have been Master Builder Series had they uh, created that label at that time. But before we go into the same crawler itself, let's go ahead and take a look at all 14 minifigures. Starting off with the minifigures, and we will start with the Jawas, we get four total and two uh, two duplicates of each style. This is the look at the Jawa, and they are actually not exclusive. They have come out in other sets, and unfortunately don't come with capes, which I think is a disappointment because we haven't gotten those in so long. But there are the first two, and then we have the second two, which just their, their cloaks, their tunics, have different bandolier styles on them. But that's the only difference. Their head and everything is the same, and their weapons are different too. And we have our first droid here. And I just realized as I'm going through this, I don't have their names memorized. So I'm just going to have to put them up on the screen. But I really like this one. He's actually quite expensive. This guy retails for like $34 in Bricklink. And so that's pretty impressive. He is white and green with just some very simple detailing. Nothing on the back, of course, because it is 2014. But a really cool astromech. Very exclusive, nonetheless. We get an R4-D5. This one particularly has a really crooked dome piece, which bothers me. I have another one that is actually printed a lot better. So I might uh, swap them out. But yeah, you can tell there. Very cool, very unique uh, still, and not exclusive to this set. Here is the R2-D2 we get, and this one is with these small receptors, which are these little blocks right there. And that is a little bit of a less common R2, but it is still a dime a dozen. This is an R1 droid, astromech, astromech droid R1 something something. And um, I think that it's actually pretty cool because these dudes are clunky looking. I can't imagine the way that these would have fit on a starship. I don't know if they had starships that small back when R1 units were you know, in service, but I know that R2s were getting pretty old. So the fact that there is an R1 unit is just really interesting on the Jan Jawa Sandcrawler. And he's mostly brick built with this printed top piece there. We also have an exclusive gonk droid with just a printing on the front. This one is not my very favorite build, honestly, but it passes. You can definitely tell what it is. Here is our treadwheel droid, which is really cool. He's like a tool droid and I like him quite a bit. And then we have the mini treadwheel droid, which is the one that you can build from the boxes in the sides, which you'll see in just a minute as I go through the review, but super cute. You get two. And we get C-3PO here. And what makes him exclusive are kind of these dirty lines running down his torso, as well as the restraining bolt right there, which makes him an exclusive C-3PO. I believe the color on the wires is also different, but I really like this one because of that bolt. I think that's a fun print. And then we have Luke Skywalker. He comes with a blue lightsaber, which is totally inaccurate for this scene. He does not yet receive his lightsaber, and he's also very macho looking in the face. They only released this Luke Skywalker with his face version for a couple of sets, and he just looks way too mature, I guess is the word. And just, yeah, not a big fan. And then he has a secondary face, which just looks angry. They lightened up Luke's face after this release, and so we don't see it quite this heavily detailed again. And then we get Owen Lars, and he is probably the most valuable figure in the set, around $83, which is quite a lot for a relatively plain minifigure. However, I do like the printing that goes down onto the legs. It's really nice. We have the hood on the back. Yeah, an exclusive face, obviously, exclusive torso. Everything about this, other than the hair, is exclusive to Owen Lars, and a fantastic update from the original. And now, if you have Aunt Beru's kitchen, you can have Aunt Beru, Uncle Owen, and Luke Skywalker, and they look pretty cool together. So those are all of the minifigures. I think you get a fantastic selection. There is really nobody missing. So it is just awesome. And I don't think that it could get any better. Good on Lego. This Maybe. set is so large for scale. Um, we'll be doing a lot of cutting away here, but I just want to go over it as concisely as I can. This thing is gigantic. It's got some stickering on it in very small places. Most of it, though, is brick belt detail, which I think is really nice. So I'll go ahead and show you all of the, the hatchets and flaps. Starting with the Jawas, control panel can open up fully. We have a knob down here that will open up the main section of the sand crawler. We have flaps on both sides that will open up, as well as this main piece right in the center. I should have lifted that up first. This main piece will pull away. 
And then this back piece will pull away as well as these two on the sides opening up. So you have just about complete access to the sand crawler with two lift away panels and lots of folding panels. So overall, a lot of space to work with. There are so many details. I think that you get a pretty good idea of what's going on. And even for adult hands, you can really reach in here pretty well. I have not yet experienced a big problem with that. So yeah, um, the other feature is on the very back of the sand crawler. It allows the wheels to turn. Uh, just the back wheels, the front wheels, I guess I should say treads. Uh, they don't they don't turn at all, but you don't really need them to. It works pretty well over my desk here. It catches the tread, which is really nice. And I will say this is definitely the best one out of the three. It is obviously the biggest, as you can tell. You can like only see my head past it. So we'll go ahead and take a quick look into each compartment and that'll that'll wrap up the review. Starting off here in the Jawa Command Center, and we just have enough space where we could probably fit all four Jawas inside. We have a couple of panels that are stickered that are like the computer panels. It almost looks like the flight deck of a ship to me. And this little thing can go all the way back. You have a lot of access in here. It is hinged up pretty interestingly. If you break off the sides that make like the angle of the the sand crawler it can be kind of difficult to put back on but it is nice it includes a bridge my favorite piece is that sticker back there that shows c3po and r2d2 with the um dragon skeleton in the back on tatooine very very cool you can tilt these computers back if you need to i think it's great interior and then twisting the knob up here does allow you to open up this center door which is the main door that we see the Jawa Sandcrawler is meant to be a Jawa city, basically. It's a city inside Tatooine that moves, and so in theory, this set is way, way, way underscaled. But you can see inside just a little bit, there's a little micro ship that, I guess, a speeder that a Jawa can use, can sit on, and then also add a crate onto, which is pretty cool. It's got little round things in the bottom, so it can kind of have a hovering effect but that does come out and it just sits right in front there. That's the main access point of this main door here. Removing the top panel um, and it just slides right on top. We see the most detail in here, including several boxes. You can see that speeder just um, a little bit more as well as a Technic built crane and it goes side to side and up and down. It has a little stick that allows it to not fall and you can actually move this crane uh, push it over and use it on the outside of the Jawa sand crawler. It has a little mechanical claw that comes down as well as claw accessories that we will see a little bit later on. But you can see the crates here and they will show you that from the outside there are these little doors and you basically can just put the crate in and it will actually roll it right into the spot. It'll roll it right into the spot as long as you push it in. So that's basically all of the play features for the inside. I will also include that there are little doors on the sides here. Each of them have six little buckets and I'm doing this like literally from behind it. So it's kind of hard to feel around. But anyways, each bucket is on like a little slope, which makes it easy to fall out. And each bucket actually includes a piece of the mini Treadwell droid that you can build. It confuses a lot of people because it is technically a minifigure, but is not built in the original instructions But there's a uh, panels for three boxes on each side of the sand crawler that you can access, which is pretty cool. Now we also have these doors and they open up on both sides just to give us a little bit more access inside. Um, you can reach your whole hand through here, which is pretty good, but it is a more, a better way to access these like crates as well. Um, and then of course you can like, if you have a bunch of Jawa, you can like sprinkle them in inside and like just set them around and make them look like they're doing stuff. Uh, but that is those panels there. Along the back, we have these doors that open all the way up. We have a ladder so that the Jawas can get down. And then you can remove this back panel here. Um, and that is gonna show you basically the Technic build that moves the back of these treads, as well as different crane operating gizmos. And so there's three different ones in here. The most probably well-known being this suction thing that is supposed to suck up R2-D2 and bring them into the sand crawler. And they just hang there very nicely. The box picker upper is down at the bottom. And that's basically it. It is a little bit messy. This is not my favorite area because it just, you see a lot of technic elements. But other than that, it looks great. These little panels on top, they don't click into anything. They just basically uh, slide into place. And that's it. That is a super wrapped up version of this sand crawler with all of its play features. It's a really, really cool set. I picked this up at my local Bricksville and they had it for a good deal. UCS, of course, so I'm very excited. 
Uh, and that's basically it. The only other thing I guess I could mention is down here we have like a little ladder that would like lead into how the Jawas would mainly enter into the sand crawler. This whole thing, in theory, R2-D2 is supposed to be super, super tiny and get sucked up from underneath the sand crawler. So if ever they redid something like this in a UCS model, they could make it just a little bit bigger and instead of giving us minifigures, give us micro figs and that would be to scale. That is something that they didn't do back in 2014, but if they did, I think would have really helped this thing seem even more of a behemoth than it already is. Um, so maybe we can look forward to that in the future at some point, getting another UCS sand crawler with micro figs to scale. That would be really cool and very, very impressive. You could certainly have a Jawa city that way. So anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed my review. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and I'll catch you on the next one. Bye.